everyone, my name's Louise and welcome to my channel. So this channel is all about my life with scoliosis and as June is Scoliosis Awareness Month I thought it would be a good time to do a video about the ways in which scoliosis affects my everyday life. Before I get into the video, I think it's important to note that everybody's experiences with scoliosis and how it affects their everyday life will be completely different. Um, some people, scoliosis may affect their life quite a lot. Other people, they might not even think about it very much. Um, it just depends on the, I suppose, severity of the curve, the location, of the curve, whether the person's had surgery or not, if they have had surgery, how much of the spine has been fused, all of these things can affect whether scoliosis will impact somebody on a day-to-day -day basis. In my case, scoliosis affects me every single day in many different ways, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video to raise awareness of scoliosis and to highlight the fact that it's not just a back condition, it affects the whole body, it affects so many different things that people just wouldn't realise unless you have the condition yourself. I had scoliosis surgery now 11 years ago. My scoliosis was very severe, um, which meant that I still have now a moderate curve post-surgery so my spine is not straight um, I have a fairly long fusion as well so most of my spine is fused. So how does having scoliosis affect my everyday life? For me because I've had spinal fusion the main way that scoliosis affects my everyday life is that I can't bend my back I also can't twist my upper back either, so um, if I want to turn around to look behind me, I can't twist to look round, I have to physically turn all the way around um, to see behind me. I guess for me, I'm kind of used to not being able to bend my back now, um, so it just feels normal to me, and the thing is, you do adapt so it doesn't mean that you can't do things it's just you have to find a different way of doing things so when I first had my surgery I remember it felt really weird um, for a while having the the metal work in my back and not being able to bend and over time I just got used to it but if you think about in everyday life how much you bend your back it's pretty much all the time. It affects you so much like, every day. So some examples for me of things that I struggle with include putting on shoes and socks, tying shoelaces. So I can do it, but I have to sort of put my leg up onto my knee to tie my shoes or to put a shoe on, for example. So I find it quite difficult if I'm out and about and I need to tie my shoelaces. Um, sometimes I have to ask other people to do it for me or I have to find somewhere to sit down and get in my position to do it. I find shoes without laces a lot easier to put on, like slip-on shoes, flip-flops, boots, things like that. Other things as well um, are just generally whenever I need to bend down to pick something up off the floor or if I need to get into a low cupboard or something like that I struggle a little bit with that I tend to bend using my legs and um, so I've got quite strong legs now because I pretty much squat every day when I'm bending down because I can't bend down any other way so I suppose that's a benefit um, to not being able to bend your back you do get very strong legs uh, other things I struggle with day-to-day -day, shaving my legs anything where you've got to to bend really getting in and out of cars I find quite difficult sometimes especially if there is a car parked very close and I have to try and twist to get out I just can't I have been stuck quite a few times I also struggle with certain exercises like yoga or anything involving flexibility because I am just not flexible anymore so any exercises like that I struggle with 
Uh, things like sit-ups I struggle with as well. I can't do them. If I've got to um, sit up from a lying down position, I find that quite difficult. So I tend to lie on my side first and then sit up that way. But all this is not to say that I can't do things. I just have to adapt how I do things. So I can still bend, I can still pick things up off the floor, um, but I have to use my legs, use my waist um, instead and just adapt. Another way that scoliosis affects my everyday life is just generally feeling uncomfortable and stiff most days. I think this is hard to explain unless you live with scoliosis and have had a spinal fusion, but my back feels stiff all the time. I find it very hard to get comfortable a lot of the time. I find it very hard to just, because I can't slouch, I can't mould my back into a chair, I can't curl up. I take a cushion pretty much everywhere. I've got one here behind me, um, a memory foam cushion. I literally carry it around everywhere. I take it um, in the car with me, um, especially on long journeys. Um, I also have it on my chair at work. I think now I'm just used to it, so it's just the norm for me. Um, but yeah, it's it can be difficult sometimes because I just find it really hard to get comfortable. And certain chairs as well, especially like hard wooden chairs, I know they're not comfortable for most people, but because I can't bend my back and mould, my back's not the same shape as um, somebody's back that doesn't have a spinal fusion, so my back won't fit into a lot of chairs, um, which means it's just uncomfortable for me. I suppose linked to this is the fact that due to the fact that I have a um, upper spine curve, which is called a thoracic curve, um, it means that the spine also twists and curves as well, which means that my ribs are actually rotated. So rotated ribs cause like a rib bulge um, on my back. So before surgery, this was quite large. Um, and when I would sit on chairs, it would dig into the chairs and just be very uncomfortable, basically. Post-surgery, it's a lot flatter now but it's still rotated a little bit, so I still have um, the same issue, really. On top of that, I can also feel my screws um, and my metalwork in my back, and they sometimes will dig into chairs and things like that if it's a hard chair. So that's another reason why I like to have a memory foam pillow or a cushion with me when I go out and about um, or at home because it just makes things a bit more comfortable. It's the same for lying down on the floor as well. Uh, if I'm doing um, exercises like Pilates or something like that, that can be quite uncomfortable sometimes because lying on a, on a sort of hard floor with just a thin mat, um, because my back's not even, and um, because of my rotated ribs, one of my shoulder blades sticks out more on one side than the other side. So that will also dig into the floor if I'm lying down or dig into certain chairs, um, which can make it quite uncomfortable. Uh, for me, the only time where I feel, I suppose, relatively comfortable is when I'm lying on, say, like a memory foam mattress or bed, um, because then my body can mould into that. But anything like a hard floor or anything like that is, can be quite uncomfortable. And another way that having the rotated ribs can affect my everyday life is that it can affect how um, certain clothes look and feel. T-shirts um, and bras as well, they just don't sit right um, because my back's not straight I suppose and my ribs are rotated so the bras just have never sat right. It can be quite uncomfortable. In very severe cases of scoliosis where there is um, severe rotation as well, lung capacity can also be affected because there's less room for the lungs if the ribs are twisting and curving. In my case, my lung capacity has been affected. I do sometimes find it difficult to take a full breath in. I have very tight muscles um, as well on one side um, of my back 
which does hurt every time I breathe in. Despite all of this, I still run, I still exercise as much as I can. I don't let it stop me from doing anything. Scoliosis can also as well cause leg length discrepancies, um, it can cause the hips to be uneven. Um, in my case, because my curve was and is um, an S curve, it meant that it sort of balanced me out. So I didn't suffer with any leg or hip issues. The majority of my issues have been my shoulders looking uneven, but it can also affect the hips and legs depending on the location of the curve. It can also cause the waist to look uneven as well, which um, it has done with myself. So on my waist, um, one side is straighter than the other side. For surgery, this was pretty obvious. Um, now it's not um, as obvious, um, but I can tell. Another way that having scoliosis affects my life on a daily basis is back pain. I'd say that I get two types of back pain. Um, the first type of back pain is tends to be in my lower back and that tends to be more of an ache. To be honest, I can live with that. It's not excruciating. It usually eases if I sit down, if I lie down, and it usually comes on at the end of the day. Um, it doesn't stop me from doing anything. It's just always there, really. The other type of pain that I get is um, usually muscle related. So muscle spasms, muscle knots, um, which normally build up around my thoracic curve in my shoulder. Um, these were worse before surgery, no doubt about it. Surgery helped a lot with, with these, but unfortunately this type of pain is bad. It, it can be bad for me. It's not eased by lying down. Um, I tend to use heat therapy um, to help it, so like hot water bottles or heat pads, that sort of thing, um, stretches, um, help as well. I've had physio quite a lot as well but I think you know it's caused by usually me doing too much and just putting pressure uh, on my muscles but I think because I have scoliosis as well I have muscle imbalances and everybody with scoliosis has muscle imbalances which means that one side of the back has to work harder than the other side um, which means that the side that's working harder often gets overworked and then the muscle spasms can happen. So that's another sort of pain that I get quite a lot, I would say. And then another type of pain, it's not really a pain, but it's more neurological issues. I get numbness, pins and needles, electric shock type sensations. I've got numbness in my right leg. I've got most of my back is numb and I can't really feel it. Sometimes um, it bothers me, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes I just forget about it because it's been that way since I've had my surgery, so I'm kind of used to it now. Um, but it does feel weird when I touch it because it's numb. My leg bothers me a little bit just because I don't know what the cause of it is. I assume it's my scoliosis, um, but I've had a lot of tests and at the moment, nobody knows what the cause is, um, but it would probably make sense to me that it's something to do with my back and neurological um, issues are very common in scoliosis because obviously the spine contains all of your nerves and if they're being compressed and twisted um, as the spine curves, then obviously it's gonna affect your nerves. Having scoliosis doesn't stop me from doing anything at all. I think it's just important that I'm aware of my limitations. I can do anything that I want to do, but I am potentially more prone to injury. So with things like running and hiking that I enjoy, I have to make sure that I strength train and that I'm as strong as possible. Um, to avoid potentially getting injured. I have to make sure that I factor in rest days. If I have done a particularly long or intense run or hike, I need to make sure that I recover properly and rest for the next couple of days, um, just to make sure that I don't overdo it and cause my back to go into 
like a flare up. So it's just being aware really of my condition and managing it. Another way that having scoliosis affects my everyday life is anxiety um, and self-esteem issues. Being diagnosed with scoliosis at 14 and having my back and body look different to other people um, was quite hard at the time and I did suffer quite a lot with low self-esteem and body image issues and I do feel like even though I've had the surgery um, and I'm older now I still struggle with those things um, I definitely struggle with anxiety and I think a lot of it is a result of having scoliosis from a young age so that's the end of the video I really hope you've enjoyed it the purpose of this video was not to complain about my scoliosis and spinal fusion but purely to raise awareness that scoliosis is more than a back condition it affects me quite a lot every day it is a chronic condition um, and I just wanted to highlight all of the ways that it affects my life and be honest really. Surgery for me wasn't a quick fix, um, it hasn't solved all my problems, it has prevented my scoliosis from getting worse which is the main thing but I still struggle and suffer post-op um, from lots of other side effects of my scoliosis. As with many conditions, early detection is crucial. Scoliosis most commonly develops between the ages of 10 and 15 and is more common in girls. It's so important to check your child's back during these ages because this is when the child is likely to go through a growth spurt and that's when scoliosis is more likely to develop. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe uh, and if you have scoliosis, please let me know in the comments below how scoliosis affects your everyday life. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye.